Welcome to worship today. I'm so glad that you're taking an opportunity to connect with us at Eden Prairie United Methodist Church in our worship of God. This late summer, we're uh, taking a trip around the track with giants of the Old Testament, giants of the faith, and learning from them what we can about our own journey in our faith life. Today, we're gonna uh, run the race with Nehemiah, and we're gonna learn from Nehemiah um, what it means to build things together, to base everything we are on prayer, and to uh, follow God's mission with determination. Would you join me now as we call ourselves to worship? God is holy and worthy of praise. Our ancestors trusted God, and they were delivered in their time of need. Although we often feel alone and tested, God has cared for us from the womb. Come, let us worship God, a God of infinite possibilities and boundless love. Would you join us now in singing together, O oh God, our help in ages past. together. Oh God, our God, sometimes we feel that you are hiding from us. Sometimes we feel that you demand too much. Sometimes we feel challenged beyond endurance. In this time of worship, may we hear not only words of challenge, but also words of comfort and promise. May we see that Jesus understands our needs and what we are going through. And in this scene, may we find hope and grace in times of need. Amen. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Sin runs deep, your, your grace, grace is more, where grace is found, is where you are, where you are.
two lessons today, one from the New Testament and one from the Hebrew Scriptures. First, let's hear these words of hope and promise written about the resurrected Jesus from the fourth chapter to the letter of the Hebrews. Now we know what we have, Jesus, the high priest, with ready access to God. Let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. Now, out of the Hebrew scriptures, let's hear about a man of God and leader named Nehemiah from the sixth chapter of the book that bears his name. When Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and there were no more breaks in it, even though I hadn't yet installed the gates. Sanbalat and Geshem sent this message. Come and meet with us at Capernaum in the Valley of Ono. I knew they were scheming to hurt me, so I sent messengers back with this. I'm doing a great work. I can't come down to see you. Why should this work come to a standstill so I could come down to see you? Four times they sent this message, and four times I gave my answer. The fifth time, the same messengers, the same message. Sanbalat sent an unsealed letter with this message. The word is out among the nations, and Geshem says that it's true, that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. That's why you're rebuilding the wall. The word is out that you want to be king and that you have appointed prophets to, per, to announce in Jerusalem, there is a king in Judah. The king is going to be told all this. Don't you think we should sit down and talk? I sent him back this. There's nothing to what you are saying. You've made it all up. They were trying to intimidate us into quitting. They thought they'll give up. They'll never finish it. I prayed, give me strength. The wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul. It had taken 52 days. When our enemies had heard the news and all the surrounding nations saw it, our enemies totally lost their nerve. They knew that God was behind this work. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Distractions happen in life, don't they? Some aren't very serious. Some keep us from accomplishing our goals. Some distractions call us to clarify our priorities and our values. In 1924, the Olympics were held in Paris. The U.S. team was the favorite team in the four-man canoe race. One member of the team was Bill Havens. 
As the time of the Olympics neared, it seemed likely that Bill's wife would give birth to their first child while he was away competing. In 1924, there were no jet airliners between the United States and Paris, only slow moving ocean going ships. Bill found himself with a dilemma. Should he go to Paris and risk not being with his wife when their firstborn child came? Or should he withdrew from the team and remain behind? Bill's wife urged him to go. She knew that being in the Olympics was a lifelong dream for him and she didn't want to distract him from his goal. The decision wasn't easy for Bill to make either, but after much soul searching, he withdrew from the competition and remained behind so he could be with his wife when their first child arrived. The United States four-man canoe team won the gold medal that year as predicted. Unpredictably, Bill's wife was late in giving birth. In fact, she delivered the baby so late that Bill could have competed in Paris and returned home in time to be with her for the arrival of their child. People said, oh, what a shame. But Bill said he had no regrets, that his commitment to his family was his highest priority. Bill Havens was a man who knew his mission. Bill Havens didn't get distracted from what was most important to him. It's the same lesson that we learned from this week's Old Testament giant, Nehemiah. This summer, we're running with the giants, learning about life and leadership from several Old Testament heroes. So far, we've heard from Esther. She taught us that God has a place and a purpose for each of us. Today, it's Nehemiah who joins us on the track. It's Nehemiah who will run alongside of us. I wonder what Nehemiah has to teach us about our faith life. Like Bill Havens, Nehemiah knew what it meant to have a mission and be committed to it. You read Nehemiah's story in the Old Testament book that bears his name. Nehemiah is living in Persia, the area that is now Iraq. He was a cupbearer for the king, which means that he was one of the king's trusted right-hand men. One day, Nehemiah received word about his hometown, Jerusalem. The walls of the city were in ruin. The gates had been burned to the ground. Now, this was a little bit different time than the one we're living in. Remember that many rejoiced in the tearing down of the walls in places like Berlin, and many now struggle with the ethics of a southern border wall being erected in our nation. But in Nehemiah's day, the destruction of the Jerusalem wall was a cause for fear. It was a standard means of uh, of national security in those days. Its destruction left the people unprotected from their enemies. Nehemiah felt God leading him to return to Jerusalem. He felt called to his hometown. He went to the king of Persia for permission to go to Jerusalem. He felt called to supervise the refortification of the wall. Not only did the king give him permission, the king even appointed Nehemiah governor of Jerusalem to give authority. To his work. The particular portion of the story we read today deals with the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. Here is a picture of the wall of Jerusalem, and you'll note that the rebuilding of this wall was no small task. The length of the wall was two and a half miles. The average height is 39 feet, and the average thickness, eight feet and they didn't even have modern construction equipment to help them. Nehemiah was embarking upon a mammoth mission. Nehemiah can teach us what it means to be committed to an audacious mission. Nehemiah can teach us what it takes to be successful in accomplishing God's mission for us. Nehemiah understood the importance of teamwork. The rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem is not the story of a single successful person. The walls were rebuilt because many people worked together. First, Nehemiah sought the help of the king, who agreed to send him to Jerusalem, who provided him with needed resources. And then Nehemiah asked for help and cooperation of the people of God. And Nehemiah inspired them to see the rebuilding of the wall as their personal and corporate group mission. They didn't need a miracle to get the wall rebuilt and their security restored. God had already provided all that they needed. They just needed to work together. 
They needed to understand that they were on a profound spiritual journey. They needed to understand that this audacious mission was God's mission for them. Nehemiah understood the importance of teamwork and joining with others on a spiritual journey. Nehemiah also understood the need for and the power of prayer. The first thing Nehemiah did when he heard about the difficult situation in Jerusalem was to pray. Nehemiah's enemies were trying to intimidate them. They tried to distract him from his work. They did that by making false accusations against him. Nehemiah didn't lose his temper. He didn't respond with aggression. He didn't get scared or, and give up. Instead, he prayed to God asking, God, strengthen my hands. Nehemiah knew that the first thing he needed to do was to seek God. He knew that only then would the work be blessed. He knew that he needed to seek God's direction in his life. Otherwise, he would be distracted from the work at hand. He knew he didn't need to carry the problem all by himself. He knew God would carry it with him and would help him. God wants to be our partner too. In Hebrews 4, um, the scripture encourages us to approach the throne of grace with confidence so we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Prayer may not release us from persecution or opposition. Prayer not, may not take away our grief and pain. Prayer may not make our work any less challenging. Prayer may not even change our circumstances. But prayer changes us. It keeps our eyes on God. It keeps our hearts open to God. It opens our minds to being shaped by God. And that makes all the difference. Nehemiah understood the importance of teamwork and prayer. He also had a spirit of determination. Nehemiah faced constant opposition in his work. Some people didn't want to spend their time and effort rebuilding the wall, but he kept encouraging them. Enemies tried to distract him by inviting him to meet with him, but Nehemiah simply told them that he couldn't go to them because he was carrying on a great work. Nehemiah never gave up. His attitude was, we will build that wall. We will stick it out. We won't allow ourselves to be sidetracked. We are going to see this through, and they did. In 52 days, the wall was finished. The people of Jerusalem had security from their enemies again, and everyone knew that the work had been done with the help of God. Do we have an attitude like that of Nehemiah? One that says we will do whatever it takes to act on what God is calling us to do? Can we say with confidence we refuse to be stopped or sidetracked in following God's lead? Teamwork, prayer, determination. All of these are necessary to accomplish the audacious mission to which God has called us. And what is that mission? Well, our mission as United Methodists is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Prairie Church is called specifically to do that by creating community that is big enough to make a difference and small enough to care. Even in this season that has literally changed everything about how we do church, it changes nothing about our being church. God is still calling us to be big enough to make a difference and small enough to care. The means with which we do that has changed dramatically, but it doesn't change the fact that God that this is God's audacious mission for us. We are creating and inviting people into community and connection. We are changing ourselves and the world around us by serving and acting for justice. In this season of change, I'm confident that God still calls us to that mission. God has big plans for us. God intends that our best years of ministry are yet out ahead of us. And that's saying something because Eden Prairie Church has been a community of great years of ministry. How are we going to live into that mission during this pandemic time? We can lean into Nehemiah's story for direction. We can mirror Nehemiah's faithful patterns in this new season for ourselves. We can learn from Nehemiah's actions how to participate anew in God's audacious mission for us. Nehemiah challenges us to remember that we are on a spiritual journey 
together. When you are tempted to skip worship or pass on connection, remember we are supposed to be in this together. And without you, it isn't a spiritual journey together. We need each other. Nehemiah encourages us to make prayer our foundation. Prayer is, our, is a foundation of every mission that God gives. So pray for Prairie Church and its ministries. Pray for people by name in our community of faith. Pray for the changes needed in our neighborhoods and in our nation. Nehemiah also calls us to an unwavering determination that will prevent us from being sidetracked or stopped on our God-given mission. Together, we are experimenting with new ministries. Some of them will work, some of them will not work. We will continue to experiment with new ways to fulfill our mission of being big enough to make a difference and small enough to care. And we will not be sidetracked or stopped in that mission by this pandemic. If we live into our mission together with prayer and an unwavering determination, we will live into God's audacious mission for us. And people will know that what we do, what we've been able to accomplish, has been able to be accomplished because of God. There's a sequel to the story of Bill Havens. The child eventually born to Bill and his wife, the year Bill missed the Olympics, was a boy whom they named Frank. 28 years later, Bill received a cablegram from Frank. It was sent from Finland, where the Olympics were being held that year. The cablegram read this, Dad, I won. I'm bringing home the gold medal you lost while waiting for me to be born. Frank Havens had just won the gold medal for the United States. He won it in the canoe racing event, a medal his father had dreamed of winning, but never did. There's a sequel to our season of Fruitful Ministry as well. This season is for deeper connection and new kinds of community. This season is for new efforts and bringing about racial justice and compassionate service. This is a sequel to our recent season of Fruitful Ministry when we were truly committed to living into God's mission and purpose. When we work together, when we pray, when prayer is our foundation, when we are determined to sacrifice and take risks together, God will empower us to live into our mission anew. God will make a way for us to be big enough to change our world for the better. God will make a way for us to be small enough to build community and connections in new ways. May it be so in us by the help of God. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you this day for our mission as a community of faith, the mission that you have given us to be big enough to make a difference in this world and small enough to care. Help us, God, uh, not to shrink in front of racial injustice or the needs, the um, personal needs of people in our community, but to rise up and speak for justice and to uh, act with compassion for our neighbors, to give what we have of our resources to alleviate other people's pain and suffering, and help us, God, to make a way and participate in that way of connecting and building community so that we can indeed be small enough to care. Help us not only care for one another in this community, but beyond the limits of this community, help us care for our neighbors near and far away. God, you challenge us, challenge us with the story of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah encourages us to work together, to make prayer our foundation, and to be determined in following our God-given mission. God, help us to live into that to live into those um, traits and characteristics that in that we might be able to live into our God-given mission. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in singing, I Need Thee Every Hour. joining us today for worship. If you would, before you leave our website, register your attendance and let us know that you've joined us. We love to get notes of encouragement and, um, and support from you. We also like to hear how we can pray for you, your concerns, and your joy. So you can leave those too where you register your attendance. Receive this blessing. God calls us as a church to be big enough to make a difference and small enough to care. And in this new season, we're gonna find a way to do that because that's God's call on our lives. So may we as a community of faith do that um, through prayer, together and determined. So be it.